but he was the most influential wrestler of his era and um you know great talker everybody copied him and um you know great personality the last time you know i'll tell one the one last story on billy which was probably and and it, it it's it's you know has to do with you know again kind of like the bad side but good side both good and bad side of billy you know the real billy was um the eddie guerrero funeral you know which is in 2005 in phoenix and billy was back living in phoenix and he was the minister at the funeral and um you know it was um billy was like you know billy loved eddie guerrero he loved all the guerreros chavo mondo all of them he loved the guerrero family and um he was out there but when he was kind of organizing the funeral he was trying to be like the booker of the funeral and he was you know basically saying you know like to different people you know you got this much time you got this much time and i think he told jericho and he didn't really know chris jericho um but he told chris jericho you have whatever it is five minutes and chris jericho of course totally ignored this and and kind of even resented that somebody was trying to rush him um when he had a lot to say and you know chris was very very close with eddie um and very cl really close so chris spoke for you know as long as he did which is much longer than billy had booked him to speak and um it led to some issues later that were very 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 sad you know when billy kind of as as could happen you know billy was you know whether it was drugs or whatever or paranoia or whatever you know billy flipped out on jericho for like no reason and just it's really an ugly 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 scene afterwards um and it was not jericho's fault at all in this one and it was sad because you know i hated to see billy you know basically and then you know be like that and um you know the other thing on the funeral was with um you know billy you know billy and and vince you know they had their ups and their downs billy sued vince um you know it was one of those cases like uh the um you know the concussion case was very similar it was it wasn't concussions it was billy basically claiming that his health issues um that came you know likely to do due to steroids among other things um that he basically sued steroid manufacturers and he sued wf and vince and the problem with the suit, which I always said was like, you know, I mean, you worked whatever it was, you know, he, he probably worked 15, 17 years career and, and several of those years were with Vince, you know, but he wrestled everywhere, you know, and he was doing steroids from 65, 67 on. He never came to the WWF till 75 and he, you know, it, it wasn't. Um, I mean, yes, they promoted him because he looked the way he did, of course, but, you know, it, it, he was going to take steroids with or without Vince McMahon. You know, that that it's not like one of those guys who came later who thought, oh, my God, everybody here is on steroids. You know, and Vince obviously never told anyone, but you know what the score was. Um, and but Billy wasn't one of those guys. Billy was going to take it anyway. And he sued. And, it, you know, I told the story about McDivitt and everything they, you know, for all that you know I mean they liked him and all you know I mean McDivitt liked him even though he had to batter him in court and um, but you know again like him and Vince were always had their ups and downs and um, one time was was after the funeral when you know at the funeral um, it did go long okay it went long and um, nobody's gonna say anything because you're at a funeral and Billy was talking a lot and and very heartfelt and you know you could really feel for it he was doing a he was actually doing a great job but it was it was going long and vince who was in the second third row i just remember him being way up there i was a little bit far behind further in the back and um vince like i, I try to remember exactly what it was but he he essentially said like we got to wrap this up or something you know it was it was some words um and billy you know nothing happened there you know and then they wrapped it up but billy was furious that vince mcmahon you know who was you know i mean it, he it wasn't his show you know what i mean but vince was like you know like making like a cat call at billy 
and Billy took it as so disrespectful. So he had another falling out with Vince over that, and I don't remember if they got back together again. You know, um, I know what um, it was. It was. Um, I don't know that they did after that point. I think that may have been the last one, but um, you know, that was just the deal there. You know, and Vince and I talked about Billy both. You know, I mean, I mean, he was being sued by Billy, but he had a great fondness for Billy. You know, he, he told me it's like you know, like I said, like the he just totally disagreed with his father taking the title off Billy. Um, you know, the business was too hot; shouldn't have done it by every rule of the business. You know, and Billy, you know, went into major depression over losing that championship when he was drawing so big because it was everything he thought a champion should do is draw big and make money for the company and vince's father just had promised it to bob Backlund and wasn't going to break the promise no matter how big business was because i don't think that they they were always a baby face champion territory with bruno pedro morales you know and then uh then bruno again um that was just what the territory was it was baby face champions and these heel managers the grand wizard lou albano freddie blassie would bring in revolving challengers, you know, every month, you know, or every two months or whatever. And that's just how the territory worked. And so Billy was, um, you know, I mean, it, it just wasn't the pattern. The pattern wasn't to have a heel champion like now. So for Billy, he was just an eight-month transitional guy uh, just because Vince Sr. felt it would take that long to get Bob over to his audience. But no matter what Billy did... He had his start date as champion and his finish date as champion. And, you know, he had most of his contenders all worked out. And he went through those contenders and did, you know, nothing but great business. And the territory was on fire, and Billy as champion was, was more in demand all over, you know, maybe not more than Bruno, but certainly more than every other champion that they had besides Bruno, including Backlund, until, you know, the Hogan era. But with Hogan, it was an isolation. His territory was Billy would, you know, Every promoter, you know, Frank Tunney in Toronto and Mushnick in St. Louis and Eddie Graham and uh, Crockett in the Carolinas, they all wanted Billy, you know, Paul Bosch in Texas, because the guy was a big, big draw. And Billy made, you know, we made a lot of money. He was probably, um, I mean, I would guess that in that couple of year period there, he was probably the highest paid guy in wrestling except for Andre. And, um, you know, but. It wasn't enough to live on or anything like that. And, and Billy was, you know, Billy was broke at the end of wrestling and, you know, just trying to come up with things. And then, the, you know, there was the, um, when they when the book came out, actually, I think the book may have been the last falling out. Um, he did the book and the DVD. They got back together. We we're going to do a book and a DVD. And Billy was all excited about, you know, doing that and touring and being on Raw. They were going to bring him back on Raw and have him promote things. And um, there was talk of him, uh, mentoring and perhaps managing Dave Batista. You know, he really wanted, he liked, he really liked Dave Batista a lot, you know, and you can imagine. And Dave Batista, if you guys remember, I mean, he had the great body, but he didn't have Billy's charisma. Um, although he ended up being a bigger star in many ways than Billy ever was, and certainly outside of wrestling, way bigger. Um, and obviously, you know, it was, it was an era where you could make tons and tons of money in wrestling. But, um, you know, Billy did have a charisma that Dave didn't have. And, um, you know, he was always trying to mentor Dave. And then it, um, you know, the book didn't sell well. The DVD didn't sell that great. DVD sold okay. Book didn't sell that well. And um, the book, the funny thing about the book is, is, you know, Billy was always, um, you know, storytelling. Like, like a lot of the wrestlers from that era. And for whatever reason in the book, if you read the book, the book is a straight story, you know, and I, you know, he told me he was going to do it straight and he really did do it straight. The book is, if you read the book, like a lot of the Billy stuff that you'll hear or hear him say or things like that is, is exaggerated wrestler talk. The book is pretty straight on what happened, not really embellishing stories or anything. It's, it's, it's actually tremendous in that way, but it was not a big seller and he got very depressed about that as well. And um, so the last thing I'm going to say is as far as like, you know, uh, Valerie putting up with Billy, being loyal to Billy, man, you know, I mean, the woman is a saint. And I just say because Billy had his uh, demons that were really, really bad at, at certain times and made it very, very difficult. Um, most of the people who were 
friends with him, you know, it was hard to maintain it because Billy just, he would just get to points where he just didn't want to deal with anybody. And, um, you know, another one Billy really liked was, um, Billy really liked Hawk and the death of Hawk really affected him bad. I do remember that, you know, when, um, both Billy and Valerie, both when Hawk died, man, that was really tough because Billy was close to him. We used to talk about Hawk all the time and Billy's thing was just like, you know, Hawk did all, you know, Hawk did besides the, ster you know, the steroids, but Hawk did all the drugs and everything like that and was living that life. And then he got to be, I don't know, 44 or so, you know, um, you know, just tried to straighten out. He really tried, you know, and the damage was already done. And Billy always found it like so sad that when Hawk realized that he'd done the damage, it was it was too late. To, you know, it ended up being too late to save him. And he was very down on that. But um, anyway, you know, there's, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a really as really really. Man, what a, what a horrible day today. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.